I hate Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> the base membership gets you just NES and SNES games, and that's portable performance that we've had since the Game Boy Advance in 2001. And for 80 eye-watering dollars, you can play Nintendo 64 games. Well, you can play 10 Nintendo 64 games. So what if I told you that for the price of three to four years of Nintendo Switch Online Premium, you could basically play thousands of games, including and up to PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube. Well, that is where the Odin Light comes in. And I'm gonna be taking this thing on a road trip to Philadelphia to see just how well it holds up as an emulation machine, as an Android machine, and as a portable companion. And if you like this video, definitely get subscribed because my Steam Deck review, which I'm currently working on, is going to take this concept to a whole nother level. We're talking international scales, so definitely be sure to subscribe. Uh, another reason to sub is that the next retro review that I'm going to be doing is going to be played entirely on an Odin Light, so there will be a dedicated section entirely committed to kind of a long-term follow-up on the Odin Light. My retro review is going to come out in a while, but it will be worth it if you want to see my follow-up thoughts. So, let's get going! We gotta go to Philadelphia now! Let's go! So. After enjoying some peak fall foliage, what better way to take a break from a six hour drive than getting into a few rounds of Mario Kart Double Dash at the rest stop? Yes, the Odin Lite can handle GameCube and even at 1080p at times. Your Nintendo Switch can't play GameCube and only has a 720p screen. But enough bullying Nintendo, at least for now. One George Washington Bridge later, and we are in the city of brotherly love. And after a night's rest, we're going to begin our day with a bit of coffee and Pokemon Snap before heading along Boathouse Row to enjoy the weather, some rowing, and maybe pick up on that game of Pokemon Snap we had started at the coffee shop. So one thing that I've really come to appreciate about the Odin Light is just how small the damn thing is. I know it's no surprise in 2022 that something the size of a Switch Lite is basically perfect in terms of portability to performance. Uh, but after daily driving the Steam Deck for about two weeks, um, this is greatly appreciated, especially being on the road, the weight and size, just being able to throw this in my bag has been absolutely perfect and a dream. So yeah, the size of the Odin Lite is a major highlight. Keep in mind, we're playing PlayStation 2 games on this thing, and emulating PlayStation 2 games for that matter. But the ergonomics push past a simple Nintendo Switch Lite. The back of the device is more contoured for comfortable holding, and there are added paddles, which you are either free to use or, of course, ignore entirely. So after enjoying Boathouse Row, we climb our way up Lemon Hill to take in a view of Center City. Another thing that I love about the Odin Lite is its battery life. Coming from a launch day Nintendo Switch, which gets just over three hours of battery on a good day, and the Steam Deck, which, spoiler alert for that review, is probably the worst battery in a device that I've ever reviewed, uh, this thing is a breath of fresh air. I'm not gonna give any hard battery numbers because there's so much you can do in terms of performance tuning and what emulators you're running, but if you're playing this thing conservative, you can get like 10 hours of gameplay on like an NES, and if you want to crank it up to GameCube, well, you're still going to get a good handful of hours, and for something in this price range, that's amazing. Yes, the Odin Lite handily trumps Nintendo in terms of battery and performance, especially compared to the launch day Nintendo Switch. Now, one thing I will say is some of that burden lies on you to achieve that balance of battery and performance. You need to set up the emulators. You need to set the right system preferences and set the right performance mode per game, and even once everything is all said and done, there will be constant tweaking to achieve desired results. Because while Odin Lite can play PlayStation 2 and GameCube games, things are going to need to be modified on a game-by-game -game basis, especially in terms of PlayStation 2. Of all the games I tested, there's yet to be a single game that I have considered unplayable, but for PlayStation 2 especially, there's a decent chance that you're gonna find yourself playing at 30 frames per second and at the game's original intended resolution or even a little bit lower at times. And yes, this process takes time, 
But the way I see it, you're going to fall into one of two categories. You either already are into the emulation scene, you know what you're doing, and you can basically migrate your ROMs and tweak each game as you decide to play them. And for this kind of person, there's a fair chance you're actually gonna have fun doing this, or you're new to the emulation scene, or Android at all. In which case, there's some great guides online, and you can set up systems as you find games you wanna play. I mean, you're not gonna need to load 500 games on this thing day one, so just set up a handful and enjoy the machine until you're ready to take on a little bit more uh, grunt work. So I guess that is one of the benefits of paying Nintendo software engineers to do a little bit of the heavy lifting for you. With Switch Online, you can trust that your $80 is going to deliver rock solid, well tweaked experiences for your 10 Nintendo 64 games. Oh wait, it definitely doesn't do that and they definitely have had a lot of problems in terms of tweaking their emulation. <laughs> but if you are willing to put in the time to set up the emulators, get your ROMs and optimize the games you wanna play, you'll be getting outstanding battery and performance compared to just about anything on the market in a similar size category. And well, that art museum in the background is looking pretty good from Lemon Hill, so let's head on down. But on the way, we're gonna take a stop at the skate park for some Tony Hawk. The Philadelphia Art Museum is absolutely amazing. Check out my inside review for a few more thoughts on it. But in terms of the Odin light, something about the Odin light I'm not super thrilled about is fit and finish. And here we have the biggest thorn in Odin's heel and the biggest W for Nintendo. Odin is a new company and Nintendo has much better quality control, warranty, and a general history of trust. And if you followed the Odin Light Saga on Kickstarter, the much appreciated weekly updates also told a story of bad screen suppliers, low volume output, and frequent band-aids to budding issues. So while some of these issues may be relatively unique to my early light unit, I'm going to call them out just so you are aware. My unit of the Odin Light has the new screen and my model has a few things to note about that screen. There's a very subtle vertical line on the bottom left of the screen. It's like a weird little bump that looks washed out. This line is consistent, it is not software dependent. If Odin was a bigger company like Nintendo, I definitely would have attempted to get another unit, but considering I was trying to get this review out and I was planning this trip to Philadelphia, I didn't really have time to deal with Odin, send something back to China, get something back from China, and I honestly felt kind of bad for all the people who were waiting for theirs. I didn't want to take up another unit. The screen also does not sit flush on the device. There's a bit of a bulge on parts of the edge. That's less of an issue for me personally, but it definitely hints towards a few imperfections in their quality control. I have a pretty wiggly D-pad. I'm not sure if this is specific to me or part of the design of the device. The D-pad itself works plenty fine, but it has a lot of play, which is weird because every other button is really quite nice on the Odin Light. So now the rest of my complaints are more design disagreements or ways the light falls flat in comparison to the Nintendo Switch Lite, for example. The SD card slot is the single most awkward SD card experience I have ever used on a device. It makes the Switch's weird behind the kickstand solution look genius. Realistically, you're only going to need to access this a few times in the device's lifetime. But for a device which is pretty blatantly about frequently loading ROMs, I wish a bit more thought went into the process because a simple push to eject would make plugging the SD card into your PC a much better experience than fiddling with these latches. And while I am thankful Odin Lite did get a video out solution looking at you Nintendo Switch Lite, the HDMI Mini is notoriously a troublesome output. Just one extra dongle for you to have. I know the chip on the Odin Lite doesn't support video out over USB-C and the effort to engineer video out via HDMI was a challenge for the Odin team, I just thought I would call out that you will be dealing with HDMI Mini if doing video out on a regular basis was something you were planning on doing with your Odin. And expectedly, no HD rumble here, folks. Now, are any of these deal breakers 
I don't think so. But a picky buyer might be a bit more discerning, and the fancy RGB joysticks and accent lights on the side can't hide some of the obvious flaws. But fit and finish isn't everything, and where the Odin absolutely crushes Nintendo is in the games that you can actually play. Despite all the previous complaints, a few things are still true. The fit and finish of the Odin Lite beats most, if not all, of the portable emulator competition, and it can emulate much more than Nintendo's current offering. From NES to GameCube, PS1 to PS2, Master System to Dreamcast, this is the way to play the most retro games on this small of a footprint. And taking a bus over to City Hall, we can catch a quick game of Dr. Mario before enjoying Love Park and the world's largest freestanding masonry building. And it's not just games that the Odin Light's capable of, it's a, basically a phone. It's fully operational if you drop a SIM card in. And while that may not sound like a big deal, it certainly is. Much in the same way that a Steam Deck is considered to be a portable computer, it's not always that bad to have a secondary device that can do everything your phone can do. Now I know you might be scratching your head on this one. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, right? Who cares? I already have a phone. Well, let me try to make a case. First of all, the controls on the light are going to make playing Android games much more enjoyable than on your smartphone, assuming those games fully support an external controller. And if you are more into online games, there is a SIM slot and you could use this as your phone if you're outside of Wi-Fi. This is particularly helpful if you're traveling, let's say internationally, which considering you're using a portable device, it is entirely possible. Productivity and other entertainment besides gaming is also possible on this device, and while yes, you might already have a phone, having an additional 6600 milliamp battery is extremely handy while on the road. Why burn your phone's battery watching Netflix on a long trip when you can just use your Odin and keep your main communication device charged up and ready to go? And good luck watching Netflix on your Nintendo Switch. <laughs> The Wi-Fi 6 allows for experiences like Steam Link and Game Pass when you're not on the road. I found having a portable Android device much more capable than having a handy Linux device while traveling, spoiler alert for my Steam Deck review. And just being able to grab ROMs, emulators, look up guides directly on the Odin rather than a secondary device is really handy and quite great. So the Odin Lite is almost my perfect retro machine. It supports about 90% of the games that I want to play up to GameCube and PS2, which is pretty damn good, and to be honest, most of the games that I actually care about are the ones that are supported. The ones that aren't supported, at least that I've read about, I'm not particularly interested in. But definitely do your research before committing. The build quality straddles the line between Nintendo Switch Lite and all of the kind of Chinese emulation machines before it. Uh, it's definitely much better than the Chinese emulation machines before it. Doesn't quite live up to the multi-billion dollar company that is Nintendo in terms of warranty, build quality, quality control, and creature comforts like HD Rumble, which don't exist on retro games anyway. Uh, and it is a fully featured Android device, which I found quite useful and it can kind of come in handy if you ever want to watch a video and not train your phone battery, or if you are into Android gaming, this is definitely something to look into. It's not gonna have flagship performance, but it will have more than flagship controls. So is it perfect? No. But hey, it's pretty damn good, and uh, I will definitely be canceling my Nintendo Switch Online membership in lieu of paying this bad boy off in a couple of years. I really like the Odin Lite, and I can recommend it to people who are willing to kind of fiddle around, roll up their sleeves, and get their feet wet in the Android emulation scene. <laughs>